Hello, hello, I'm Brunton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get accepted in medical school and other professional programs. And welcome back to another exciting episode of MCAT Bytes. Today, we'll be exploring mass spectroscopy. It's a powerful analytical technique that helps us determine the molecular mass and structural features of organic compounds. Understanding the principles and applications of mass spectroscopy is absolutely crucial for the MCAT and for your understanding in research and medicine. So let's get started here. First, this is what a mass spectroscopy spectrometer looks like. There are many different variations, but they all do kind of the same thing. You're going to inject your compound into the machine and it's going to get analyzed magically. And we'll talk about this magical analysis. Mass spectrometry is based on the principle of ionizing molecules and separating the resulting ions, according to something called their mass to charge ratio. And this is very important. It's your MZ ratio. You'll often see this written sideways, M slash Z. A mass spectrometer consists of three main components, an ionization source, a detector, and a mass analyzer. The most common ionization method for organic compounds is called electron ionization, which involves bombarding the sample with high energy electrons. And this process causes molecules to lose an electron and form a radical cations, often referred to as molecular ions or M plus with a dot. The MCAT, you don't need to worry too much about how it works, but it's kind of nice to know because it'll help throughout everything else make sense. What you do need to know are the key features of a mass spectrum and how they relate to the structure of organic compounds. The main features of the mass spectrum are first our molecular ion peak shown here, or your MI peak. This molecular ion peak, and we talked about this as being the M plus with a little dot here, represents the intact radical cation formed by the loss of an electron from the original molecule. The MZ value of this peak corresponds to the molecular mass of the compound. The presence of a molecular ion peak helps determine the molecular fragment size of the compound, which can help us get the molecular formula. Then we've got our base peak. This is the most intense signal in the mass spectrum, and its intensity is arbitrarily set to 100%. The base peak is often a fragment ion resulting from the breakdown of the molecular ion. The identity of the base peak can provide insights into the stability and structure of a molecule. And then we've got our fragment ions. This is everything else. They're formed when the molecular ion undergoes bond cleavage and breaks into smaller pieces. The MZ values of the fragments provide information about the structural features of the molecule. Some common fragmentation patterns include alpha cleavage, which is the cleavage of the bond adjacent to the heteroatom, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur. We can see in this diagram down here that we have our heteroatom, and it's not the bond that is attaching the heteroatom, but it's one next door. So that's alpha cleavage, because this is the alpha carbon. Then we have benzylic cleavage. This is cleavage of the bond next to an aromatic ring. And less important is the retrodeals elder or RDA fragmentation, cleavage of a six-membered ring into two smaller fragments. Recognizing these fragmentation patterns can help you deduce the structure of the molecule. Really, you want to think about it as sort of the fingerprint of the molecule. Finally, before we do some practice, I want to talk about isotope peaks. So isotope peaks arise due to the presence of naturally occurring isotopes, such as carbon-13 and bromine-81. These peaks appear at MZ values slightly higher than the main peaks and can help confirm the presence of specific elements in the molecule. For example, a compound containing one bromine atom will show a molecular ion peak with an isotope peak of a 1 to 1 intensity ratio separated by two MZ units, which we can see here. Chlorine, on the other hand, will be a 75-25 split. Now, let's practice on a tricky MCAT problem here. The mass spectrum of an unknown organic compound shows a molecular ion peak at MZ108 and a base pair at MZ91. Which of the following structures is most consistent with this mass spectral data? Well, first, let's start drawing this out. And feel free to pause and try it on your own. So I'm just going to draw it. So I've got an MZ at 108, and the base peak is at 91. Remember, our base peak is the going to be the tallest one. So we know this is super stable, and 108 is going to be the size of our molecule. So let's start analyzing this. The molecular iron peak at MZ108 suggests a molecular formula that has to equal, well, 108. Let's think about this just in terms of carbons and hydrogens, because that's going to be easy enough to do. So 108, how many carbons could we fit in there? Let's look at our options so we don't have to reinvent existence. So 12 plus 12 plus 12, or 12 times 3 is 36, plus a 16 oxygen, 52. We're nowhere close with A, so we're going to cross A off. And then three carbons, well, oxygen is basically B, so we'll cross that off. And A and B weren't even close, and C is just 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons. So 3 times 12 plus however many hydrogens we've got, nowhere close to 108. 
then leaves us with D. And D is already looking way better, um, but let's make sure just in case. So we've got six, seven carbons. So seven times 12, we've got five plus two is seven plus one on the OH. We've got seven hydrogens and the hydrogen weighs one. So we'll multiply that by one. And then we have a single oxygen here to 16. We add that together and we're gonna get our 108. So this leaves us with D as our answer. So we didn't even have to worry about the base peak in this one. We just cared about the longest one. And that's a good way to do it, honestly. Like, just look at this. The MCAT is not an organic chemistry exam. So take it as easy as possible. Take the easy ones, guess and check. Don't try and reinvent the wheel. Mass spec is super valuable for determining the molecular mass and structural features of organic compounds. Out of all of the methods we've talked about, this is the one most often used, maybe next to NMR. But in the biosciences, Man, do we love mass spec. You can do metabolomics, lipidomics, all of the fun omics besides genomics and RNA omics you can do with mass spec. It's really having its moment right now in science. So you definitely want to make sure that you understand the principles of it, such as molecular ion peaks, base peaks, and the common fragmentation patterns. By practicing the interpretation of mass spectra and combining the information with other spectroscopic techniques, NMR, you'll be well equipped to solve complex structural problems on the MCAT, or in your free time. So if you haven't already watched our NMR videos, I highly recommend that. That'll complement this very nicely. But thank you so much for watching our video on mass spec, and I'll see you next time.